Hello, welcome to the Voice of Triumph. My name is Ugochuke Bazo. It's our Sunday service online, online. and I'm sure you've had a great week. Let's go right into the Word of God. Today we're looking at the seventh part in our series on spiritual gifts. And the motivation for this uh, study is a scripture in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 and 10. I'm reading the New Living Translation. Let's look at it quickly. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 and 10. Look at verse 7. He said, the end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayer. Now, verse 10, he says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. So God begins to say to us that as we approach the end of this age, it's important for us to begin to pay attention to our gifts, to identify them, to appropriate them and begin to use them in kingdom service and in serving the world around us. Now, motivated by this instruction from God, we began to explain the fact that each member of the Godhead has given special gifts to the body of Christ, to the church. Uh, by this we mean the Holy Spirit, um, our Lord Jesus Christ, and God the Father himself. Each of them has given special gifts to certain people in the body of Christ or in the church. And we established that from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to read from verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 4. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 4. Now look at what it says in verse 4. He said, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, those ones given by the Holy Spirit. We just um, finished examining every one of them, nine of them. We just, you know, finished our, um, our examination of each of them, each of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, the five says, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, this one talks about the gifts given by our Lord Jesus Christ to the church. We haven't looked at these, we'll look at them as we go on in the study. And then the, the sixth verse says, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God who worketh all and in all. This one talks about the gifts given by God, the Father, to the church. So we established that each member of the Godhead has given special gifts to certain people in the body of Christ. So we, we're, we're going to look at some of the gifts given by God himself. We see that in verse 6. It says, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God who works all and in all. So the gifts given by God to the church are called diversities of operations. That's what we're going to be looking at. Today, we're going to be looking at some of them today. Praise God. Now, what are the diversities of operations? What are these gifts that the Father has given to the church? Let's look at verse 28 of the scripture. It explains the gifts, the diversities of operations, or the gifts given by God the Father to the church. Remember, we just finished looking at the words given by the Holy Spirit, the nine of them. Now, we're looking at the words given by God the Father. And after that, we're going to look at the words given by our Lord Jesus. So what are those gifts that God the Father has given to the church? They are listed in verse 28 of the scripture, verse 28 of this chapter. Verse 28, quickly. Hallelujah. Verse 28. Hallelujah. Now it says, And God has set some in the church. First apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, Helps government diversities of tongues. Diversities of tongues. Now to explain that, you know, these gifts are given to certain people in the church. Not everybody. Verse 29 says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. So we begin to see that God the Father has given certain gifts specifically to some people in the church and they are called diversities of operations and we saw them praise God now in this category we shall examine only two and I'll tell you why we're going to examine only two in this in, in this category of the gifts given by God to the church and we're going to be examining examining um, helps and government health and government those are the two that we would look at and the reason is Simple. Let's go back. When you look at the gifts lifted here, it says, And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, 
Now, he mixes some of the gifts that our Lord Jesus has given to the church with some that the Holy Spirit have given to the church that we already examined, like miracles. Working of miracles, we already saw that. Amen? Then the gifts of healing, we already saw that under the gifts given by the Holy Spirit to the church. Then it talks about helps. We haven't examined health, so we're looking at helps are one of the gifts of God. And then governments, we haven't looked at that. We'll be looking at government as one of the gifts of God. Then it talks about diversities of tongues. We studied that under the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So this is the last week. We won't go over them again. So in this study of the gifts given by God to the church, we'll be looking at just two of them because we've examined some of them before. We're going to be looking at helps. And we're going to be looking at governments. Amen? We're going to be looking at health and governments. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have it written here. I'll be reading out a lot of the things that are written here. Amen? He said, the first reason is that we already examined miracles, gifts of healings, and diversities of tongues as gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then secondly, prophets and teachers will be examined when we begin to study the gifts given by Jesus Christ to the church. So let us begin with helps as one of the gifts given by God the Father himself to the church. Now, I have a few things, quite a number of things written here. Number one, says, it is important to note two things about this wonderful gift from God called helps. So we've established from the scriptures that there is a gift from God called helps. Let's look at some of the things about this gift. Number one, it is not one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit because we already saw the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is given by God the Father. Number two, it is one of the five, it is not one of the fivefold ministry gifts. It is not one of the fivefold ministry gifts. Therefore, a person who operates help or helps as a gift from God may not necessarily be called into the fivefold ministry or may not have a fivefold ministry gift. In the future, when we look at the gifts given by Jesus Christ to the church, we'll be examining the fivefold ministry gifts. So we're saying that a person who is giving help as a gift from the Father may not necessarily be called into the fivefold ministry. And this is very important because many well meaning children of God have noticed this gift, helps, in their lives and mistook it to mean that there is a, that they are called into the fivefold ministry. Many well-meaning children of God have you know, you know, observed that they operate helps. They've seen helps as a gift in their lives and they mistook it to mean that they are called into the fivefold ministry and they went off and started trying to operate in the fivefold ministry offices, which of course always ends up in a lot of the chaos that we see in the church today. So we're saying that someone who is giving help as a gift from God may not necessarily have a call to the fivefold ministry. So what is helps as a gift from God? Helps defined. I have it written here. It is a special gift from God, the Father, not the Holy Spirit, not Jesus Christ, that empowers a person with an unusual passion and ability to support those in the fivefold ministry. Amen? To support those in the fivefold ministry. In other words, helps as a gift from God is a supportive gift. It is meant given by God to some people to enable them to support those in the fivefold ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, help is one of the most silent gifts from God. And I will explain why. So we want to look at helps. A silent gift from God. And I have some things written here. You see, although usually silent in the church, this gift is very vital for the success of those called into the fivefold ministry. Helps as a gift from God is very, very critical and vital for those who are called into the fivefold ministry. By this, I mean the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. People with helps as a gift are like the unseen pillars that hold up a gigantic building. You know, people who operate helps as a gift from God are like the unseen pillars holding up massive buildings. Amen? It is called helps 
not help. It is plural. Helps, not help. Because there are different aspects of the operation and the manifestation of these gifts. What does it mean? It means that amongst those who operate this gift, they, are, they, are, they, they will record more successes. Different people who operate this gift will record more successes in different areas. Amen? That's why it is called helps. There are diverse manifestations of this gift called helps from God the Father. So it means that, you know, uh, among those who operate this gift, there will be specific passion and grace in certain areas of help that helps than the others. In other words, you know, those who operate this gift have different um, areas of success or different areas of greater manifestations than other areas. That's what we're saying. That's why it is presented as helps, not help. So it's possible that as you, you're listening to me, you're beginning to sense that, you know, you might have this gift in your life. Maybe that's why you tuned in. God is saying to you, stay it up. You know, identify it, begin to appropriate it, and begin to deploy it. Because we're living in the last days. Very soon we're going to be standing before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ, where you, you, you know, you'll be, you'll be rewarded according to, you know, your gifts that you identified, and according to the gifts that you used to serve your generation. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're beginning to look at health and we're establishing that even though it's a silent gift, it's like one of the pillars holding up a gigantic building, a gigantic building. Praise God. Now, behind every successful ministry are men and women who labor under the operation of this gift called helps from God. Such men and women often display an unusual grace and ability to help. Amen. The explanation for this is simple. Every spiritual gift comes with a matching of operational grace. So when you are called, you know, when you are when you are, you, you are called to operate the gift of helps, then of course it comes with an unusual grace, hallelujah, or anointing to work in that gift. If if that gift is not operating in your life, then you really do not have the grace to operate it. You know, part of the challenge we have in the body of Christ is that there are so many people who, because they admire, you know, the workings of the gift in the life of a person, you know, try to step into that gift without establishing where they are, whether they are called into it or whether they are graced or anointed for it. Every time you try to operate a gift you don't have the grace for, it ends up, you know, in trouble. You, you begin to, um, you know, allow all kinds of things that create chaos, that create... Um, uncertainty that creates all kinds of confusion in the body of Christ. Praise God. So we say that behind every successful ministry are men and women who operate this gift because they are anointed to do it. Romans 12, 6. Romans 12, 6 establishes the connection between a gift and the grace or anointing to operate that gift. So maybe you sense the grace or the anointing to operate the gift of helps. Praise God. So Romans chapter 12 verse 6. Look at what the Bible says. Romans 12 6. Hallelujah. He says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the profession of faith. So he says that every gift comes with an operational or matching grace. Ephesians 4 7, quickly. Ephesians 4 7 again makes the connection. Praise God. He says, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So for every gift, there's grace. If, if, if you're given help as a gift from God, there's grace to operate that gift. Praise God. So now let's begin to have an established that helps is the gift that, you know, um, God has given to some people in the church that produces the unusual capacity and passion to support those in the fivefold ministry. In other words, helps as a gift from God is a supportive gift Let's now begin to see some of the manifestations of this gift. How do you identify health as a gift from God the Father in the church? When, you, when somebody's operating this gift, how would they recognize, how would they identify that this gift is at work in their lives or waiting to be stirred up and deployed in their lives? What are the manifestations of this gift? Number one, an unusual passion and ability 
to help a ministry of gospel work financially. That's one of the very key manifestations of helps as a gift from God. People who operate this gift often have an unusual passion and capacity and ability to support, you know, a ministry or a gospel work financially. Amen. Now, I have it written here. Whilst Galatians 6, verses 6 to 8, we're going to read it, clearly affirms that all believers should support the work of the gospel financially. We are all expected to support the work of the gospel financially, according to that scripture. It's important to note that, you know, some people in the church, however, have been specially endowed with grace and passion, hallelujah, to, you know, specifically and sacrificially support the work of the gospel financially. Whilst every one of us is expected to support the work of the gospel financially, we recognize that there are people in the church, certain people in the church, that have been endowed with unusual capacity and passion to sacrificially give for the work of the gospel. That's what we're saying here. In Paul's language, such people will gladly spend and be spent. Such people would gladly spend and be spent because they are operating under a grace called helps, under a gift called helps. Praise God. A person with this gift operating in their lives may not necessarily have so much financial resources or advantage at a time or a point in question, but will gladly part with whatever much they have when they see a ministry need. They may not have so much at a point in question, but they will gladly give everything they have when they see a ministry need because they are operating under a grace called helps. In some cases, such people will often go out of their way to look out for possible areas of financial need in the gospel work, in the church. That's what we're saying. In one of his letters to the Corinthians, Paul the Apostle acknowledged the manifestation of this gift among certain Macedonian believers. He recognized, he saw this gift working among certain Macedonian believers and he testified to it. Amen? When he was speaking to the Corinthians. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Praise God. We see this gift reported among certain Macedonian believers. Praise God. Look at it from verse 1. He said, Moreover, brethren, we we'll do you wit of the grace, we we'll do you to know, we we'll want you to know the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in a deep, in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality, that even in their poverty and troubles, they were willing to give because they, 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 these people were operating under the grace of helps. Amen? It's just three. For to their power, I bear record. Yeah, and beyond their power, in other words, they were giving beyond their ability. There was a supernatural ability propelling them to give. And beyond their power, they were willing on themselves, praying us with much entreaty, that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. Praise God. Now, I'm going to read this also in the New American Standard Bible. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let's read the New American Standard Bible, the same scripture that we just read in King James. Look at what it says. It says, Now, brethren, we wish to make known to you the grace of God. So it was a grace working in these people, which was, you know, given to the churches of Macedonia, that in a great ordeal of affliction, their, ab their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed in the world of their liberality. It wasn't as if they had so much, but there was something propelling them to give. For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, can you see? Hallelujah. They gave of their own accord, begging us with much urging for the favor of participation in the support of the saints. Praise God. So these people were willing to give sacrificially. They had an unusual, a supernatural ability, grace, propelling them to give supernaturally to the work of the gospel. Amen? Now, in, in, in verse 3, for example, Paul acknowledged that they gave beyond their power, which shows that it was a supernatural power and passion that motivated and propelled their giving. Hallelujah. His mention of grace in the first verse makes it clear that the manner of giving displayed by these believers in Macedonia was unusual. 
They were obviously operating under a special given grace. This made it possible for them to joyfully support him and other gospel ministers even in their deepest poverty. Praise God. So we say that one of the very key manifestations of health as a gift from God to the church is the unusual passion, ability, capacity to support the work of the gospel financially. Praise God. Financially. Hallelujah. Now let's look at another manifestation of health as a gift from God. How do you know well, whether this gift is at work in your life or there in you waiting to be identified, stand up and deployed? How do you recognize this gift? Secondly, an unusual passion and capacity for intercession. For intercession. An unusual passion and capacity for intercession. Now I have something written here. This aspect of health is primarily responsible primarily responsible for the emergence of intercessory ministers and ministries whose sole preoccupation is to intercede for other gospel ministers, ministries, and the Great Commission in general. It is the operation of this gift, this aspect of health, an unusual passion and capacity for intercession that has given rise to intercessory ministries and intercessory ministers. Praise God. Now, while 1 Thessalonians 5.17 instructs every one of us as believers to pray without season, we must admit that certain men and women in the church have been endowed with unusual capacities and passion to stand in the place of prayer and intercession because they operate this grace called helps in the area of intercession. Such people are often selfless in prayer, hallelujah, constantly carrying a burden for the needs of others. That's how you know them. Constantly interceding and carrying a burden for the needs of others or communities or even nations. Praise God. Now the support from men and women who operate this aspect of health in the success of any ministry or gospel endeavor cannot be overemphasized. Amen. Now let's read Isaiah 59 verses 15 and 16 and see what it shows. Isaiah 59 verses 15 and 16. Isaiah 59 verses 15 and 16. Look at what it says. Verses 15 and 16. You say, Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil makes himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Amen. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. God was looking for a man, you know, operating um, the grace of health in the area of intercession. God was looking for an intercessor, you know, that would stand, you know, between him and the people so that he wouldn't pour his wrath upon the nation. And he says, I can't find any intercessor. How come I can't find any man or woman who, you know, who operates the, the, the gift of helps in the area of intercession? That's what it says here. You know, and he wondered there was no intercession, intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness sustained him. Praise God. His righteousness sustained him. So what does it tell you? This scripture tells us how important such people are to God even in the consummation of his plan and his purpose on earth. In fact, God is constantly searching for men and women with this aspect of health as a gift from him, who operate intercession as an aspect of health. God is constantly looking for them because they are very critical in the, in the consummation of God's plan and purpose upon the earth. Without men and women who operate under intercession as an aspect of health in the church, God's plan for it will, be, will, will not come to pass. It will be difficult for God to consummate his plan for humanity. It is the ministry of men and women who labor under intercession, praise God, that bring about the consummation of God's plan upon the earth, praise God. Now, there's a story that I'd like you know, to, to share here. Amen? But before I do that, let me say something here. In most cases, such men and women are neither recognized nor celebrated by the church. They are neither recognized 
not celebrated by the church. Remember we said that these men and women who operate house as a gift, they are usually the unseen pillars holding up things in the body of Christ, holding up things in the gospel endeavor. Praise God. They are usually unrecognized. They are usually uncelebrated by the church. However, they are always an asset to heaven. They are always an asset to heaven. And I want to share the story of a woman who operated intercession, hallelujah, as an aspect of health in, in a particular ministry. Amen? I remember a story I read long ago of a woman, a pastor, sorry, to whom it was revealed that one of the greatest pillars of his ministry was going on to be with the Lord within a particular month. Amen? And then because this pastor set his eyes on some of the people he considered pillars in the ministry, that month passed. Unfortunately, he did not recognize that anyone in the church had died because he had his eyes on certain prominent people. God was later to reveal to him that it was an old woman who labored on her knees for years, unrecognized by the pastor and the church under the ministry, under the ministry of health. Amen? That she was one of the strongest pillars for the success of this pastor's ministry. Can you see? Again, Paul the Apostle testified of certain Corinthian believers who became a blessing to his ministry through the manifestation of you know, intercession as an aspect of health. He talked about them in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 11. So we've seen the story of this woman. This pastor didn't even recognize that a woman, someone had died in his ministry. Meanwhile, God knew this woman because it was the, it was the intercessory ministry of this woman as an aspect of health that, you know, was responsible largely for the success of this pastor's ministry. Because people with this gift are usually unrecognized or uncelebrated. And Paul had people like that who supported his ministry, who were pillars in his ministry. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 11. 2 Corinthians 1, verses 8 and 11. Quickly, verses 8 and 11. Praise God. Hallelujah. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life. But we had this sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but trust in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from such a great death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver. He says, you also help him. So Paul was talking to people who were operating the gift of health. You mean, you see, you also help it together by prayers for us. So these people were intercessors under the ministry of health. Prayer for us, for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons. Hallelujah. Thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Paul himself recognized the impact of these men and women under the, you know, under the, the, the ministry of health as intercessors in his own ministry. Amen. Now, people who operate you know, intercession as a ministry of help, such men and women can labor for hours in prayer, sometimes whole days, without even recognizing it because they are operating under a supernatural grace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you've sensed this burden in your life. God is saying to you, stand it up so you can use it to serve your generation, to serve the kingdom. Praise God. Now, we'll look at one more manifestation of helps in the church, and then next time we'll look at other manifestations of this gift. There are quite a number of them. The third manifestation of helps as a gift from God is an unusual passion and grace to cater for the personal needs of gospel workers and gospel ministers. So there are people who um, you know you know operate an aspect of helps in, in the area that they have a burden. You know, that's the, that's how helps. You know, operates in the, in their life. That's how the anointing. That's how the ministry of help operates in their lives. They have an unusual body, an unusual capacity to cater for the personal needs, not gospel needs, personal needs of gospel workers and gospel ministers, not the work of the gospel itself. We've looked at that, but the personal needs of the gospel workers and gospel ministers. That's how the ministry of helps operates in their lives. Praise God. Now I have some things written here. Galatians 6 verses 6 and 7 says something to every believer. 
you know, admonishes every believer to learn to give to those who minister to them, particularly in the world. Look at what he says. Let him that is taught in the world communicate unto him that teaches in every good thing. In other words, support those who teach you. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that also shall he reap. Look at the New American Standard Bible. He said the one who is taught the world is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. So this is for every believer. He said, don't be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he reap also read. So, whilst this is an instruction for every believer, we must recognize, hallelujah, we must recognize that, you know, there are people, you know, in the church with an unusual grace and passion to, you know, to cater for the personal needs of gospel workers and gospel ministers. Now, in a local assembly, for example, such men and women will constantly identify and respond to the financial and material needs of their pastors and their leaders. Amen? They are primarily there to help the pastors give themselves wholly to prayer and to the ministry of the world. That's why God put them there, so that gospel ministers can focus on the work of the gospel, and not be thinking about, you know, how their personal needs and family needs will be met. Because God will always position men and women with this aspect of the ministry of health. To help the pastors focus on the work of the gospel. Praise God. To help them focus on the work of the gospel, prayer and the ministry of the word. We see an example of this manifestation or the manifestation of this gift in the lives of certain women who minister to the personal needs of our Lord Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry. We see some women who, you know, you know, personally minister to the needs of Jesus Christ. They minister to his personal needs that enabled him focus on his ministry. Because these women were operating under this aspect of the ministry of health. Praise God. Let's look at the example in Luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 3. We see the story of this woman, or the testimony of this woman. Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. They were ministering to the personal needs of our Lord Jesus Christ that enabled him to focus on the ministry. So God puts them in the work of the gospel, puts them in the church, so that they can, they can meet the personal needs of the gospel workers, the leaders, the pastors. And then that enables them to focus on the work of the gospel, to the ministry of the word, and to prayer. Praise God. And in omissions, hallelujah. Now look at what he says. And it came to pass afterwards that he, Jesus, went through every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And also certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod, Steward, and Susanna, and many other women who ministered unto him of their substances. These women were known for ministering to the personal need of Jesus Christ because they were operating under the ministry of help in this area. This was how help, helps was working in their lives. This was how the ministry of helps was working in their lives to meet the personal needs of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we see other examples in, in a woman called Lydia, another one, Priscilla, and Aquila, who were all Paul's helpers in the ministry. These people were Paul's helpers in the ministry. They were helping Paul meet some of his needs in the ministry. They were operating the gifts of help in this direction. Let's look at the, the, the scriptures and we close. Acts chapter 16, verses 14 and 15. Acts 16, verses 14 and 15. Acts 16, verses 14 and 15. Look at what it says. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Theatre, who worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things that were spoken of by Paul. And when she was baptized in a household altogether, she besought us. She begged us, saying, if, I, if you've judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house, abide there. And she constrained us. And she constrained us. So she brought them into a house, and looked after them, and afterwards began to meet some of their needs. 
Praise God. Because she was operating under the ministry of helps in this area. Hallelujah. Romans 16 verse 3. Romans 16 verse 3. Hallelujah. You say, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ. Paul called them my helpers. Why did he call them helpers? Because they were operating the ministry of help. They were supporting Paul's ministry. Remember, help as a ministry is a supportive ministry. It is meant to support those in the five-fold ministry. So these this people operating under the gift of helps were supporting Paul's ministry because Paul was called into the five-fold ministry. Ministry. So again, maybe you sense this aspect of the ministry of health in your life to meet the personal needs of gospel workers, pastors, and gospel ministers, and maybe missionaries. Maybe God is saying to you, find it up, stay it up, use it, because we're coming to the end of this age, and very soon your gift and the way you used your gift will be counting when you stand before our Lord Jesus Christ to give account of your stewardship. So God says, use it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, when we meet again, we'll be looking at other manifestations of the gift of helps, the ministry of helps, as a gift from our, uh, um, God our Father to the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe that God has spoken to you. And I'm praying that as we do all of this, you begin to find your place so that you stay relevant in, in the plan and the purpose of God, especially in these end times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're taking them in bite sizes so you can go back and meditate on it and let it begin to re redefine the way you, 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 know, you respond to the, 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 the kingdom needs. You begin to respond to the work of the gospel in these last days because it's your time to, to stay relevant. It's your time to increase your relevance in the kingdom of God and to the world around you and your gift is the seed that God has put in you to make you stay relevant, to make you increase in your relevance and you will not lose your relevance in the times we are living in, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I do not want to close the broadcast without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Maybe that's why you tuned in. You want to surrender your life to him, say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart you died for me on the third day. God raised you from the dead. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you'd like us to, should you like us to pray for you, counsel with you, share a burden with you, or you'd like to share a testimony of the impact of this broadcast on your life or family, be free to call any of the numbers on the screen. We would attend to you. Amen. Now, before I go, I'd like to remind you once again, you're loaded with gifts, ready to be a blessing to your generation. You will not lose your season in the name of Jesus. I love you. Bye-bye.